you should build a support item on ADCs. Now, this seems like a bold statement, especially since Riot has previously in the past said that this doesn't work. My claim is that if you take the support item and farm 20 of the most valuable minions every 5 minutes, you will end up with more gold than you would farming regularly. Over the rest of this video, I will explain why and how this works, but first let me explain how I came to this conclusion. You see, I suck at this game. So when Season 11 brought with it hundreds of changes to items, old and new, I saw an opportunity to look through the numbers and find an item that would give me a hidden edge over my opponents. You see, in Season 11, there are two types of items that can generate you gold. The Collector, and well, all of the support items. The Collector gives you 25 gold anytime you kill an enemy champion, however, like I said at the start of the video, I suck at this game, so that clearly is not an option. So that leaves us with the support items. Now, laners building a support item isn't exactly a new idea, even at the highest level of play. All the way back in Season 9 at Worlds, we saw Naguri building Ancient Coin on Vladimir in the top lane. Then in Season 10, we saw the surge of Sona and Lux bot lanes, where both champions would build the support item and split farm. Since then, Riot has tried to prevent this by making it so that as you farm more, the amount of gold you get is reduced. So why is this possible? Well, like I said, Season 11 brought with it a lot of item changes. And with that, they actually buffed both the Spectral Sickle and Spell Thieves Sedge to give 20 gold per instance instead of 15. Now this is a massive buff to the speed at which you can upgrade this item, and this is what's important to ADC specifically, because it speeds up the rate at which ADCs can sell this item and get back to doing what they love, farming. Since you get reduced gold anytime you've farmed more than 20 minions over the past 5 minutes, my first thought was to only farm the most valuable minions, the melees and the cannons, and see... If that, along with the gold from the support item, would give you more gold than farming regularly. With this, I found that if you never miss a minion and have 100% efficiency with the support item, you'll end up with 150 less gold upon the completion of your support item than if you had just farmed regularly. Now this result was a bit disappointing. To do all this work looking at the numbers just to find out that you should farm anyways was not exactly the result I wanted. So I went back to work looking at ways in which this strategy could be optimized. The first thing I saw was that you made more gold off the first 6 waves, getting 100% gold efficiency, than you did it off the other 10 waves, not farming at 100% efficiency because you're getting the reduced gold. This led me to conclude that it's better to just let more minions die and get back to 100% efficiency faster than it is to farm all of these extra minions. That one change, farming less, and that alone results in us making 30 more gold than farming normally. But I wasn't done there with my optimizations. 30 gold just isn't enough to convince people that I'm right and they're wrong, so I wanted to get down and find more ways that you can gain gold by going with the support item instead of the regular farming items. First thing I noticed was that the wiki states you will receive less gold from excessive minion kills. Not 20 CS, but 20 minion kills. Now why is this important? Well, if we had a way that we could get the gold without actually killing the minions, we could exceed this. Lucky for us, we have a way. If your support kills the minions for you, giving you the relic shield proc, you can actually exceed this 20 minion cap. So how many more minions does this actually let you get? Well, relic shield gives you one charge every 35 seconds. So we take 300 seconds or 5 minutes and divide by 35 seconds per proc and get a number that we're going to round to about 8 relic shield procs every 5 minutes. In reality, it's roughly 8.5. Since you start with two stacks at the start of the game, in our first 5 minute cycle you can get 10, 10 relic shield procs and then 8 in every 5 minute cycle onwards. Of note, like Spectral Sickle and Spell Thief's Edge, this item was also buffed to produce more gold, from 45 seconds per proc to only 35. And with this new gold we can now end up getting an extra 265 gold at the time of the support item completion, as long as we do everything optimally. Now that last bit is important and a little bit worrying because I'm saying if we do everything optimally. In reality, nobody is going to be getting every single farm, and no one's going to be achieving 100% optimization on the support items. At some point during the game, you will sit on three stacks, whether it be because you died, or just because you went back to base, or your opponent did. So, how fast do we need to actually complete the support item to make it gold efficient? Well, I decided to create as simple a formula as I could in order to show this. So we get this formula, the gold difference at time of completion is 1000 minus 50.4 over 30 times time minus 80 plus 14 times the number of minion mists. Now this is a confusing formula, so let me explain 
where I got each of the numbers from and what each number actually means. So first off, why a thousand? Well, a thousand is the amount of gold you can get from the support item. So we use it as the baseline because we're looking to sell the item as soon as we complete it. So at the time of completion, you'll have a thousand gold from just the support item alone. Next, we get into the farming numbers and we have 50.4 over 30, probably the most confusing number in this. So this is to account for the amount of gold you'll lose by choosing not to farm. So this is found by first off ignoring the cannons because either item you build, you'll end up getting every single cannon either through relic shield procs or by farming them normally. So then we find the number of minions that each person is killing. So with the support item, you'll farm 26 melee minions over this five minute span, each of those being worth 21 gold. For the regular farming item, you can farm six minions, three melee, three caster, for a total of 105 gold per wave. So we'll have that with the support item, you can farm 26 melee minions, 21 gold each, so 26 times 21, and that'll equal 546 gold from minions. Farming regularly, however, you'll be getting 105 gold from each wave, and there's 10 waves in a five minute span. So this ends up being 1,050 gold. So subtracting from each other, you'll find that with the support item, you'll make 504 less gold than if you had farmed regularly with a normal item. So I decided to divide by 10 to show the amount of gold per wave that you'll roughly be losing by taking the support item instead of taking the regular farming item. And that was just 50.4 gold. Then I wanted to divide it into how much gold per second, because seconds are easier to calculate than waves. So we get 50.4 divided by 30 because a new minion wave spawns every 30 seconds. So I did time minus 80 because in the bot lane, you're roughly going to start farming around the 1 minute and 50 second mark. But that's at wave 1. I wanted to mark where wave 0 was. Since every minion wave spawns every 30 seconds, we just subtracted 30 seconds from the 1 minute and 50 seconds and have 80 seconds or a minute and 20 seconds. That's where the time minus 80 comes from. Then there's the 14 extra gold per minion missed. Now this might seem confusing. Why is the support item gaining gold per minion missed? And the reason for that is, both farming regularly and with a support item, you'll end up missing gold. But how much gold differs between which item you're building? You see, with the support item, anytime you miss a melee minion, you just replace it with a caster minion, and you end up only losing 7 gold because you go from a 21 gold minion to a 14 gold minion. If you're farming with a regular item, you just lose that gold forever. So that's where we get that the support item build is 14 gold closer for every minion missed. This formula can then be converted into one that shows us the time needed to complete the support item with this new formula. So the time needed for an efficient completion is 675 plus 8.3 seconds per minion missed. So this says if everything is done perfectly, you need to complete your support item by 675 seconds. Any minions missed add an extra 8.3 seconds to this. So for example, if you miss 30 farm before item completion, or around 140 farm by 15 minutes, or around 8 CS per minute, you'll need to complete the item in 924 seconds, or 15 minutes and 24 seconds. With these new numbers, this task all of a sudden feels a lot more manageable. 15 minutes is really not too long for the support item completion, and 8 farm per minute is pretty average from what I've seen in this game. If anything, it's high. I will, however, note that this formula only holds while your support item has not finished the relic shield passive, and the fastest they can do that is around 15 minutes anyways. In case you don't believe the numbers alone, let's look at some games where I played like this and see how the gold pans out. So in this first image, I'm playing Heimerdinger bot against Kogma. You can see at the time of this picture being taken, I'm down 20 farm, a kill, an assist, and a tower plate. Yet somehow, I am up 400 gold, and my support is also up 600 gold. That is only due to the support item and allowing my own support to farm himself. In this next game, I'm playing the Senna bot lane against the Kaisa. And this game's even more drastic. I'm down 40 farm and 2 kills, and yet I'm up 600 gold somehow. My support is up 2000 gold on the enemy's support. Again, this is all due to the support item. So let's move past the math and numbers and actually get down to the pros and cons. As much as I've been hyping this up, there are cons. You're not just going to be getting more gold for free. And there's some champions and scenarios which you should just not build this item. So first off, you can get more gold. That's the one I've been talking about for the last little while, and that's the most obvious pro. You're going to end up getting more gold if you complete this efficiently. Next one, we have that you have a completed support item. 
Now, I've been talking throughout this video about selling the item, but there are a lot of reasons to keep it. A few of the important things to consider is how efficient this item is. If an important fight is coming up, keep the item. This item's stats alone are worth 1400 gold, and that's not considering the additional wards it gives. It's also a legendary item, so if your mythic is completed, you'll get additional stats there as well. Also to note, farming jungle camps and wards do not count towards your minion cap. So some games you can just farm a lot of jungle camps and keep getting efficient gold from lane minions. You have the option to do both, and having more options is always a positive in this game. The next positive, you can get the Vigilant Wardstone. And a lot of you are probably going to be asking, what even is the Vigilant Wardstone and why do I want this item? This item is an 1100 gold legendary that gives you 12% to your bonus AD, ability haste, and AP. It's a very gold efficient item that provides a lot of power on top of its passive, allowing you to hold and place more control wards. And I know what you're thinking, you need a support item to have this item. So this point completely overrides the last point I made about the flexibility allowing you to sell or keep the support item. Here's the thing though, this item does not require you to have a completed support item in your inventory. It simply requires that you have completed a support item in the past, but you don't still need to have the support item. You can sell the support item and still end up buying this item and it will upgrade automatically. Again, this item is a legendary. So technically you can have two legendary items and a ton of stats for just 1500 gold between this item and the support item. This is a ton of power for very cheap and that needs to be kept in mind. Next, you don't need to focus on farming. This is a major key for people, especially in low elo, who struggle to focus on farming while also focusing on dodging abilities and poking the enemy at the same time. It really simplifies things, only requiring you to get 20 minions instead of trying to get as many as you need. It really allows you to have bad wave mechanics and sort of get away with it for free because you don't need all of those minions anyways. It's fine if some of them die. Next, not only will you get extra gold, but your support will too. See, we don't need to just let those minions die. See, your support can actually take the farm and also get 20 CS per 5 minutes and end up with more gold as well. Now we'll move on to the cons. There are cons here. Firstly, you'll be weaker in the early game. The unupgraded support item is just weaker than the Doran's item. Until you complete your first upgrade, you will be weaker. You'll have less stats. Next, you need to keep track of when you farmed minions to make sure you don't get reduced gold. It's very important that you don't exceed this 20 CS per 5 minutes because you'll end up getting 50% reduced gold and that can scale up to 80% if you keep doing it. It's way less gold efficient and it really makes this strategy not worth it if you end up accidentally farming minions that end up giving you reduced gold. The next con is you'll need a relic shield support. As I addressed before, the relic shield is quite necessary to make this super gold efficient. If you don't have a relic shield support, you'll struggle a lot more to make this gold efficient in comparison to just farming regularly. The next con is you need to be able to poke and attack the enemy. Ultimately, you need to be able to attack people to complete your support item. It's not worth it if you're playing someone who's just sitting under tower getting bullied and never hitting the enemy. You'll, you won't complete your support item fast enough to make this worth it. So based on these pros and cons, which champion should build the support item instead of the Doran's items? First, we want to look at which champs can poke and like short trades. Mostly long range ADCs with abilities that are good for poking and getting easy stacks of your support item. Then champions who can stack AD and ability haste, which utilize Vigilant Wardstone well. Seeing as this item does not stack attack speed, this will mostly be the lethality champs or champs that tend to stack AD and ability haste. The best candidates I would argue are Senna, Caitlyn, Misfortune, Varus, and basically every single mage. Now, Senna herself is a little more complicated with her souls passive, so I actually made a separate video going into specifically Senna and how she interacts with this strategy. You can see that video in the description. ADCs which can utilize Hail of Blades well also do well with this starting item due to the ability to quickly give the three stacks with three auto, auto attacks. Now who shouldn't build this item? This is going to be short range ADCs who can't poke, champions that stack a lot of attack speed because Vigilant Wardstone isn't good on them, and champions that need a strong early game, and champions that prefer all-ins to short trades. From this, I would argue that Draven, Samira, and Vayne should never build this item. For Draven specifically, his early game power is too integral to his kit, as well as he can't use his passive if he's using this item, because he's not stacking off of minions and getting some adoration stacks. For Vayne and Samira, they care way too much about all-ins, so it's difficult for them to get the stacks constantly without putting themselves in way too much danger. 
Obviously, this works better in low elos. In low elos, where ADCs are farming at around 5 or 6 CS per minute, I would say that this item is always efficient to build over the regular items, unless you're playing specific champs like Draven who needs his adoration passive. As the elo rises, the farm also goes up, so the situations where building this is efficient become a little more precise, although I would argue on specific champs, it can be utilized all the way up to the professional level. If you stayed to this end, thanks for watching. Obviously this video is a little bit different from what I normally do, going more into math and stats, but it's something I still enjoy doing and I look forward to doing it more in the future. If you'd like to contact me personally, I have my email down in the description that you can email me personally on and I typically will respond to you with that. Thanks again for spending your time watching this video though.